Hello all, welcome everyone. This is Jyotika CH pursuing BSc Final MPC in TTWRDC Women Kottagudam. I am going to discuss about thermodynamics. I will begin by outlining introduction of thermodynamics and highlighting the basic concepts of thermodynamics and I will briefly explain about the laws of thermodynamics. The term thermodynamics in that thermo means heat. Historically it took lot of time to consider heat is a form of energy. In 1798 by Count Romford he explains heat is a form of energy. Later on various scientists worked together and gave a thermodynamics to us. Thermodynamics is a branch of science. The division of science explaining the concepts of conversion of heat into work and heat into other forms of energy is called thermodynamics. This was formalized as a science by various scientists in the 19th century like Kelvin, Joule, Clausius, Clapeyron, etc. But Gibbs developed and endeavored the scope of thermodynamics into another level. Thermodynamics was originated as a result of man's endeavor to convert heat into work. It is a subject of great generality and it is extensively applicable to all branches of sciences and engineered to analysis of physical and chemical changes. Before going to introduction of my class of thermodynamics, let me ask few questions regards thermodynamics. When we rub our plums together, we feel warmer. When we keep a cup of tea in a room temperature, after some time it get cool. Why? What's the reason behind it? Like this, many questions arises to us in our daily life related to thermo, whatever the physical or chemical changes happen that all comes under thermodynamics. Introduction of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is a Greek word. Thermo means heat. Dynamics means power or flow. The study of flow of heat is called thermodynamics. Now the basic concepts of thermodynamics is thermodynamical systems, thermodynamic terms. System and surroundings are comes under thermodynamic terms. Now what is system? What is surroundings? It is defined as a finite quantity of matter or a prescribed region of a space upon whose observation or attention is there for analysis is called system that means whose observation is there that is called as system and boundary here the term boundary means it is a actual or hypothetical enveloping enclosing the system is called boundary the boundary may be mobile or it may be steady Everything in the universe except system is called surroundings. For example, if we take a water in a glass container, the water we, our observation is on water, so we consider it as system and the glass container is called boundary and remaining the air around the glass container is called as surroundings system and surroundings together comprises a universe that means the system and the surroundings is 
together comprises a universe now basic basics of thermodynamics in that classification of system based upon the boundary nature of boundary systems are classified into three types open system closed system and isolated system in open system there is a transfer of energy and matter between system and surroundings here the boundary the in open system the boundary we call it as volume surface for example automobile engine or the hot gas from the combustion and entering and leaving the gas turbines in industries we observe that gas turbines in that the energy as well as the matter both will uh, entering and leaving the turbines into system and surroundings so we call that as open system next closed system in closed system there is only exchange of energy takes place not the matter such type of systems are called as closed system example for an closed system is is would be putting a, an ice cube ice pack on a injury here you observe if any person will get injured then ice pack will observe the uh, if we keep that ice cap ice pack on the injured part the ice pack observes the energy and relieve the pain Be here what will happen the energy will transfer but not the matter so that called as closed system and another example of closed system is a mixture of petrol vapor or air inside the combustion chamber of an engine now another system is isolated system isolated system isolated means here the term indicates lonely that means in isolated system there is no exchange of matter as well as energy that means uh, the energy and the matter remains constant in system and surroundings example for the isolated system is hot liquid in a thermal flask or a sealed vapor flask these are the examples of isolated system here from the figure you can observe that in the first figure open system means energy and mass or else energy matter both will entering and leaving the system and surroundings that type of systems are called open system and another one is closed system in closed system only the energy may be transfer not the matter and in isolated system no neither energy nor matter both are at constant so it is called as isolated system next in the basic concepts of thermodynamics now we are going to discuss about thermodynamic variables what is thermodynamic variables or equation of state thermodynamic variables the variables which are represents the state of a system are called thermodynamic variables means if a system what is the state of a system to explain that we use variables that variables we call it as thermodynamic variables for example pressure volume temperature are called as thermodynamic variables or also called as state variables because Uh, the variables which are used to state the system that only we call it as thermodynamic variables so it is also called as state variables here the function of pressure volume temperature remains constant and these three terms are independent so if we know two values then we can easily find another value by using the known two values like pv equals to rt 
Now, what is thermodynamic equilibrium? Here, thermodynamic equilibrium. We know till now thermal equilibrium. What is thermal equilibrium? If the temperature remains constant throughout the process, it called as thermal equilibrium. But here, the term thermodynamic equilibrium means two systems when they are in chemical thermal and mechanical equilibrium with the each other then we call it as thermodynamical equilibrium from the figure you can easily observe that in the bottle there is water and the water temperature is at room temperature and the surrounding temperature is also at room temperature both are in thermal equilibrium with each other and the pressure inside the system that means inside the bottle the pressure of the water and outside the system that it that means the pressure of the air both are in both are in uniform so we called that as chemical equilibrium now mechanical equilibrium now the chemical equilibrium means the composition of water is h2o and it is uniform throughout the bottle so it is in chemical equilibrium any system which is in thermal, chemical and mechanical equilibrium, then we call it as a thermodynamic equilibrium. Here, the bottle contains thermal equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium. So, it is treated as thermodynamic equilibrium. Any system, not only this, any system, if it possesses thermal, chemical and mechanical equilibrium, then the system is said to be in thermodynamical equilibrium. Now, coming to thermodynamic process. What are thermodynamic process? There are four types of thermodynamic process. They are isovolmeric or also known as isochoric process, isothermal, adiabatic and isobaric process. What are these processes? First one is isovolumeric or isobaric process. In this, in this process, in thermodynamic process, throughout this process, the volume, volumeric or isochoric means volume, the volume should remain constant or the volume should be uniform throughout the process. That process we call it as isochoric or isovolumeric process. For example, a car with closed window parked in a hot garage is an example of a isochoric process means throughout the process the volume should be remains constant but it is it will be in thermodynamic process only and here volume is constant means no work done on the system or by the system why means we all know that work is a Work is equal to PDV means pressure change in volume. Here the volume is constant means change in volume do not occur. So work done is equal to zero. So work done on the system or by the system will always zero in isochoric process. Next isothermal process. In isothermal process throughout the process the temperature will be remains constant. That type of processes are called isothermal process example of isothermal process are slow process like a balloon expanding slowly during the day is an example of isothermal process and adiabatic process what is adiabatic process adiabatic in adiabatic process throughout the process the heat remains constant no exchange of heat will takes place that type of process are called as adiabatic process adiabatic process is also called as isolated process also example for adiabatic process are fast process like filling a tank is an example of adiabatic process next isobaric process in isobaric process throughout the process the pressure will be remains uniform that means entire the process the pressure will not will not change this 
process is called isobaric process example of an isobaric process is heating an open pot of water here if you observe that a graph is plotted between pressure and volume y axis is plotted as pressure and x axis is plotted as volume here first one is isobaric process in isobaric process we get that horizontal straight line because in isobaric process the pressure will remains constant so we get a horizontal straight line and then isochoric process in isochoric process or iso volumeric process the volume will be constant so we get a vertical straight line and isothermal process and adiabatic process the curves get slightly curved bent because in isothermal process and adiabatic process the pressure and volume changes will occur like that so from the figure it is observed that how the process will occur and next work done in an isothermal process work done in an isothermal process we all know the work is integral form of pdv so here p means pressure v means volume and change in volume we denote as dv from the ideal gas equation pv equals to nrt here p means pressure v means volume n equals to number of moles r is universal gas constant and t is absolute temperature from that we write p value p equals to nrt by v we consider first w equals to integral of pdv as first equation and now this p value is second equation by substituting second equation in first w equals to integral of nrt by v dv here n and r and t are constants in isothermal process temperature constant so nr t v take it as from the integral from so integral initial volume to final volume 1 by v dv integral of 1 by v is log v we all know that by substituting the upper and lower limits log v2 minus log v1 log a minus log b we have the formula log a by b so nrt log v2 by v1 we get this as work done in an isothermal process next work done in an adiabatic process work done in an adiabatic process is what work done in an adiabatic process pv to the power of gamma equals to k in adiabatic process we considered k equals to pv to the power of gamma and p1 v1 or p2 v2 anything we can consider it depends upon the states so w equals to pdv we all know that here from the k equals to pv to the power of gamma we can derive the p value k by v to the power of gamma we get by substituting the p value in work done w equals to integral of pdv we get p2 v2 gamma minus 1 v to the power of gamma minus gamma minus 1 and p1 v1 gamma and v2 gamma minus 1 by 1 minus gamma from this we can write 1 by 1 minus gamma p2 v2 minus p1 v1 from the ideal gas equation we know that pv equals to nrt so by here two states are there so p1 v1 treated as mu or t1 and p2 v2 treated as mu or t2 by substituting these values w equals to 1 by 1 minus gamma mu or t2 minus mu or t t1 here the terms mu and r are constants so we take it as out as common mu r by gamma minus 1 t1 minus t2 this is the work done in an adiabatic process next difference between heat and temperature most of the people assume that there is no difference between heat and temperature these two terms are same but no uh, they are all not right because heat and temperature 
both are different there is a difference between heat and temperature heat is a form of energy temperature is its measurement to measure how much heat of your body we use the term temperature and heat raises the temperature of your body but temperature decides uh, how the heat will flow from high temperature to low temperature it will de decides and heat is a measure of joules and uh, temperature is measured in terms of kelvins or celsius like uh, in physics we have derivations right mathematics we use for the derivation part mathematics is a language to express physics like that temperature is a measure to express heat of a substance like that there is a difference between heat and temperature next temperature and zeroth law of thermodynamics by zeroth law of thermodynamics we define temperature we define heat fowler scientist the scientist fowler proposed this zeroth law of thermodynamics actually what will happen means first scientist proposed the first law of thermodynamics then second law of thermodynamics but after that fowler proposed the zeroth law of thermodynamics and he felt that uh by using this zeroth law of thermodynamics only we define temperature temperature is the basic one to express all type of uh, heat of your systems or uh, substances so uh, they already uh, named as first law and second law so he named that law as zeroth law of thermodynamics because before one zero is there so he named it as zeroth law of thermodynamics and from the zeroth law of thermodynamics only temperature concept will rise it the zeroth law of thermodynamics signifies the temperature of his system so from this heat temperature will came into the picture what is heat what is temperature he all we all uh, obtained from the zeroth law of thermodynamics heat heat is a form of energy and it transfers between the substances due to the difference between the temperatures heat always flows objects do not have heat the point here make you little bit confusion but if you observe clearly heat flows always from objects which have which do not have heat means uh, if for example if we place here if we uh, keep a hot tea cup in a room temperature the air uh, which surrounds the tea cup will be at normal room temperature so it is in when compared to the tea cup it is in cold temperature cool temperature so always the heat wants to transfer from high temperature to low temperature and which doesn't have the heat the substance which doesn't have heat uh, to that only the heat will transfer and then heat always transfers from high temperature to low temperature until it attains thermal equilibrium because when the two objects or when the two system or surroundings whatever when the two systems are in thermal equilibrium that means uh, there is no transfer of energy between two systems that means they two are in same temperature until that point they will transfer energy for example again, again we take uh, Uh, one hot substance and we keep it in a normal room temperature the air surrounds that hot substance will be at uh, room temperature so it gains heat from the hot substance until the hot substance and the air surround it will be in thermal equilibrium so like that the heat transfers until the two systems or the system or surroundings or the two substances will attain thermal equilibrium 
Now zeroth law of thermodynamics. What is zeroth law of thermodynamics? From the figure, you observe that we have three systems or three objects A, B, C. Here, A, B, and C. The objects A and B are separately and independently thermal equilibrium with the third system C. That means A is thermal equilibrium with C, and separately B is thermal equilibrium with C. But here A and B is also thermal equilibrium with each other because there is no contact between A and B. But A is thermal equilibrium with C and same temperature. A have the same temperature like C and B also have same temperature like C. So A and B are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. This is. Call zeroth law of thermodynamics. From this zeroth law of thermodynamics, we define the temperature and we came the concepts of heat and temperature. Now next basics of thermodynamics. Before going to first law of thermodynamics, we discuss about the internal energy because in first law of thermodynamics, internal energy is the key one. By that internal energy only we can explain the first law of thermodynamics. So, what is internal energy? It is defined as the sum of the all sum of the kinetic energy of all particles and sum of the potential energies of interaction of those particles. That means change in internal energy equals to del. De Delta U equals to here. Delta U equals to change in internal energy. U two minus U one is U uh, one is uh, initial internal energy and U two is final internal energy. By the difference of this only, we can uh, estimate the internal energy of the system. Internal energy is nothing but, uh, for example, if we take one uh, one gaseous substance, in that the molecules are uh, always randomly move movable. Uh, the kinetic energy of that molecules and the potential energy of those particles, uh, we can sum up them. Then we get the internal energy of the system. By using the internal energy of the system, we can explain the first law of thermodynamics. What is first law of thermodynamics? First law of thermodynamics is simply we can say the amount of heat energy. We are given to the system. It is is utilized to increase its internal energy, and some of that is utilized to be work done. For example, from the figure, you can observe that state one and state two. In this, pistons, uh, the in the container, the pistons are there. From this state one to state two, the heat will transfer, and the work done will also occur. The work done. How the work done will occur means, in state two, you can clearly observe that one of the piston will raise us up. By that, the gas will work done on the system. It will explains. Here, internal energy. We we do not hear internal energy as E from the state one and state two. E two minus E one because we. Just now we discussed internal energy delta U equals to U two minus U one. Like that here E two minus E one equals to the amount of heat energy. Uh, here denote as Q, and the work done is W. Change in internal energy is equal to the difference between the difference between the heat transfer into the system and work done by the system. This is called first law of thermodynamics. Means here, what will you you will observe means change in internal energy equals to difference in the transfer of heat energy into the system. That means from the state one to state one, state two, and work done by the system. Here, uh, the piston will arises. So in the state two, you observe that the gas will do work. So by the system. It will happens. Uh, that means first law of thermodynamics. What the first law of thermodynamics states means the amount of heat energy we given to a system is somewhat utilized to increase its internal energy and 
work done by the system this is called first law of thermodynamics limitations of first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics you uh, uh, just now we uh, discussed the first law of thermodynamics but in first law of thermodynamics some of the drawbacks are there what are they for example they didn't explain the uh, what conditions or processes or phases for example in first point you observe that from the figure fuel to work that means by uh, converting fuel energy into work we can convert fuel into work but the process is not irreversible because because that work can't again convert into fuel it is uh, the process is not occur so first law of thermodynamics doesn't explain the process of uh, how uh from fuel to work or fuel work to fuel like this it doesn't explain the processes how uh, if the process will occur like that means how the first law will obey like that some of the some of it can't explain by the first law of thermodynamics and second one it also doesn't explain whether the process will occur on its own or not make we uh, here the second one is from the ice to liquid the conversion of ice to liquid will happen as spontaneously on its own but it can't again uh, converts liquid into ice spontaneously or without external work by ex by doing external work only it can convert again liquid into ice so it is not possible for the spontaneous or like this process what will happen the first law of thermodynamics doesn't explain and again it also doesn't explain the conditions whether uh, how if for example from high temperatures to low temperatures always the heat flows but what about the converse from the cold uh, from the cool regions or from the cold substances to hot substances the energy will transfer or not then what happens to first law of thermodynamics at that conditions like this some of the process phases and conditions uh, doesn't explain by the first law of thermodynamics so to rectify this first uh, these drawbacks or these limitations second law of thermodynamics came into picture what is second law of thermodynamics in second law of thermodynamics there is two statements and the two statements is uh, given by the great scientist clausius and uh, kelvin planck and they named as clausius statement and kelvin planck statement what is clausius statement and what is kelvin planck statement clausius statement is it is impossible to construct a device that transfers heat energy from a cold reservoir to hot reservoir without applying an external work on it that means uh, without ex applying any external force on a substance the there is no flow of heat from a cool region to hot region it is impossible thing that statement is given by clausius and kelvin planck statement is it is impossible to convert the heat energy whatever the heat energy we are given to the uh, system it is impossible to convert the heat energy completely into work somewhat of energy what we are given to the system that is must and should utilized to increase its internal energy and remaining part should be converted into work and this was given by kelvin planck statement kelvin planck statement is it is impossible to it is impossible to a device uh, operating heat engine the effect of which is to absorb energy in the form of in the form of one object from a singular reservoir and to deliver the whole energy whatever the heat energy given to the system is into work example for the clausius statement is refrigerator because uh, in in refrigerators by applying external work that means by giving the electricity only we get the uh, cool uh, in the refrigerators we get by abstracting the heat uh, in, in the back side of the refrigerator by abstracting that heat only we get the coolness 
so it is an example of uh, glacier statement and kelvin black statement is the heat engine it is the uh, for the in heat engine what happens uh, whatever the uh, whatever the source working substance sink we take that amount of heat energy coming from the source will be utilized to uh, to utilize to increase its internal energy as well as some of the inter, uh, energy heat energy we given to the system is utilized to convert into work so this is called uh, these two statements all comes under second law of thermodynamics why second law of thermodynamics came into picture before only i explain in first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics what happened some of the in first law of thermo, first law of thermodynamics explains the certain amount of of energy flow flow in particular system or in particular conditions or in particular process that means uh, the amount of internal energy we are given to the system is uh, completely changing heat that means the amount of uh, change in internal energy or change in work done is equal to heat energy but what happens when the conditions or when the process or when the phases are changed it can't explain so to explain that second law of thermodynamics came into picture by second law of thermodynamics we can uh, if the processes are reversible or irreversible or the conditions uh, maybe uh, the from cold region to hot region or hot region to cold region and also spontaneous reaction uh, non spontaneous reactions whatever the reactions whatever uh, the phenomenon all should explain by the second law of thermodynamics in second law of thermodynamics uh, there is a main wonderful concept is entropy entropy means disorder of your system or randomness of your system by that also a uh, lot of changes will occur in thermodynamics part and next is in second law of thermodynamics direction of change how the direction of change in second law of thermodynamics the process will occur in a certain direction and the energy has quality as well as quantity uh, always in second law of thermodynamics the energy uh, the transformation of energy to a uh, some direction means always it uh, transfers that uh, the heat energy transfers from hot reservoir to cold reservoir not from the cold reservoir to hot reservoir because uh, uh, to extract or uh, to transfer the heat energy from the cold reservoir to hot reservoir by applying external work only by applying external work only it will happen that is only in our glacier statement like that it will happen so by this my class is completed before end up my session just i will summarize what we are discussed in this class firstly we discussed the introduction of thermodynamics later on basic concepts of thermodynamics and uh, loss of thermodynamics limitations of thermodynamics and how the uh, thermodynamics will useful in it is a thermodynamics is a great generality of uh, subject to express the phenomenons around us and it is widely extensively used in all branches of science sciences and engineered to analysis the physical and chemical changes all over so thank you all i hope you all understand thank you for the listening thank you